Okay. So let's uh, continue our lecture. Okay. So uh, the simple architecture of uh, McCulloch and the Pitts. Okay. Uh, proposed uh, can deal with uh, logic proposition, but uh, uh, probably not so much useful for the other task. So, you know, there's another uh, proposed uh, simple architecture, okay, um, by Frank Rosenblatt, okay, in 1957. This is close to the end of uh, uh, the first AI wave. Actually, this architecture was very popular in the first AI wave. And uh, remember I told you, okay, people uh, uh, proved that uh, at that time, like uh, this, um, uh, the ANN doesn't work. There's a limitation for ANN architecture, okay. The limitation, okay, they refer to, okay, is this one, is the perceptron, okay, perceptron, okay. So what is perceptron, okay? So this is based on uh, artificial neuron called uh, linear threshold unit, LU, LTU, LTU, okay. So the input, output are numbers, okay. So it's, it is no longer just a binary on of value, okay. Remember in the McCulloch Pitts model, okay, the neuron can only deal with on of values, okay. But um, here, okay, in the LTU, each input connection is associated with a weight. So not only the input is a number, I mean, the, each input is also associated with a weight, okay. So the L LTU computes a weighted sum of its input. So assuming we have like uh, n features, we have n features, x1, x2, up to xn, then the weighted sum will be z equal to w1, x1, plus w2, x2, plus blah, 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 plus wn, xn, or we can write it as w, the transpose of w uh, dot x vector, okay, of course these two are vectors. I mean, this is like a kind of like a matrix multiplication, okay? Um, so then apply a step function, okay, to that sum and the output, the result. So what is step function, okay? This step function, okay, is not, it's not specified, okay, so clearly, okay? But uh, um, if you draw it in a figure, the LTU, or another way to call it uh, is like a, you know, threshold logic unit, okay? Threshold logic unit is uh, called TLU. Uh, well, it a, sounds a little bit strange, but LTU and TLU refer to the same thing, okay? So you can see it accepts some inputs, okay? And uh, for each input, we have a associated weight, okay? And then after you add up the weighted sum, okay, you apply a step function, okay, and uh, you output it, okay? And uh, the reason, okay, we call it threshold logic unit, okay, why we have that logic there, okay? It is because the step function, the output of the step function, mostly will be either zero or one, okay? These are the two most popular step function used with LTU, as you can see. Even either the heavy side or a sine function, okay? It, I mean, they output a zero, one, or negative zero, negative one, zero, or pa and a positive one. Okay, pretty much like uh, just, just uh, the output value are still very, I mean, uh, it's still very binary, right? very binary, or well, at least the choice is not too many, okay? The output is not arbitrary value, okay? Just want you to be aware of that, okay? So, uh, to be honest, like, uh, the heavy side is used more often, 
okay so you may ask well then if the output is zero or one when you connect them together like uh, it's still on and off right okay but remember we have this weight right we have this weight if it's zero of course no matter what way you multiply to the result is still zero but if you have uh, output if you output one after multiply that output with uh, a, a weight then the result will be that weight right okay so it's not exactly just I mean you know just binary okay so we know single LTU uh, can be used for simple linear binary classification okay uh, because it basically okay you can see this function this function uh, 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 this one z equal to this one obviously, obviously you know describe a linear function right so so it can be used to to for like a now binary classification okay so that's uh, um, because well it's pretty much a linear function just like uh, um, uh, uh, kind of like linear regression uh, situation but linear regression is like you get you give like a value it gives you the output value but uh, I mean when I say this we use this for uh, classification I mean like uh, because it describes a linear function right so it cut the space into two two pieces so one you can treat one one piece as like one class the other half as like uh, the other class okay so it can be used for simple linear class, binary classification okay so it compute a linear combination of the inputs and the result if the result exceeds a threshold it output the positive class otherwise it's negative so it's a uh, kind of like a linear logistic regression classifier okay or a linear SVN if you don't know SVN don't worry about this okay we talk about linear, log uh, linear regression so logistic regression classifier is somehow similar to linear regression so if you don't know about that well uh, don't, don't worry about that too much but uh, you you can certainly you know check out the the first half of the that uh, uh, textbook to check out this uh, this uh, associated uh, material but I I really have to draw a line okay that I, I, I refrain from like uh, describing too much about uh, machine learning material because after all, this class is about deep learning okay so so if you want to pick up those like uh, stuff like you can you, you can do it yourself okay so for example if you can use a single LTU to classify iris flowers okay based on the petal length and the width okay if you are not familiar with like uh, the the English term for flower and uh, and um, you know uh, okay you can classify you can classify okay based on petal length and the width then you can classify like uh, iris different iris we know there are so many iris uh, uh, types um, I, I don't know if you get if you have ever been to like a, like a, a flower exhi exhibitions okay I, I've been to one okay and there are so many different type of uh, iris out there okay so so there are other features okay uh, uh, um, so uh, we, we treat the bias feature as like x0 equal to 1 okay so we have a weight w0 okay to multiply with uh, the bias feature okay so that we ha we can have a bias term okay for our uh, linear uh, uh, um, you know equation okay so this is uh, here okay we include the w0 x0 plus the other uh, stuff and the w0 x0 that x0 is fixed to be one so w0 actually uh, represent the, 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 the bias okay so uh, um, yeah the other stuff like uh, so so what is perceptual 
okay, what is the, the its relationship with the LTU? Okay, a perceptron is pretty much a single layer of LTU, okay, um, with each neuron connected to all the inputs, okay. So um, these connections, okay, we normally say it's a special pass-through neurons, okay, I mean for the input, new, we call them input neurons, okay, so if you draw a figure, it looks like something like this. So these are the input neurons, okay, whatever it gets the input, it just pass through, okay. I mean, sometimes if you are lazy or you, I mean, you, you really don't need to draw this thing, okay, you just draw x1, x2 here, that's fine. But uh, with this, uh, uh, you know, neuron, you just need to know this is straight pass through input neurons, okay. And then, okay, you can see the input, including this bias, are directly, are, are fully connected with the, the single layers of the LTU units, okay? And each LTU will have one output, will have one output. So this, uh, okay, so a perception with two inputs and three outputs, okay, um, that is exactly this one, okay? Two inputs, three outputs, okay? So, I'm um, sorry, okay? Um, so, I mean, in the next big, uh, slide, okay? So this perceptron can classify instances simultaneously into three different binary classes, okay? Uh, which make it multi-output classifier. So it can deal with three binary classifiers simultaneously, okay? Of course, if you want to only classify one, uh, um, uh, uh, one binary, if you want to do one binary classifier, okay, then you don't need so many output. One output will be, will be enough. And uh, for this one, okay, for example, for example, okay, remember I say like, uh, there are so many iris flowers, right? As soon the X1 is petal length, the X2 is a petal width, okay? Then what happens that, okay, you can use these three output, okay? Even though each one is a binary, you can use them to represent eight different classes, okay? Uh, uh, each class is represented by zero, 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 0, 0, 001, 0, 010, 0, and so on. Okay, you can have eight different classes based on this. Okay? So, remember I told you, okay, uh, ANN use linear algebra a lot, right? So, here you can see we can actually represent the um, the previous uh, perceptron, I mean, into something like this, okay? So in here, okay, um, the X, okay, represent the matrix of input features, okay? It has, it has one row per instance and uh, one column per feature, okay? And the weight matrix, okay, is W, okay? So it contains all the connected weights except for the ones from bias neuron, okay? So the bias vector B is here, okay? We don't represent bias here, but we put bias here. Okay, any question? Okay, yeah, if you have a question, I mean, feel, feel free to, to raise your hand, okay? So, and then we have a function Okay, phi, okay, we call that activation function, okay? So obviously, like uh, for different type of neuron, you may have different type of activation function, okay? So, um, so for TLU or LTU, okay, it's a step function, okay, it's a step function. So you can see that we, we can deal with like uh, the ANN 
by using like a matrix multiplication. So remember this uh, LTU and the perceptron concept was trained, uh, was proposed by this Frank Rosenblatt. Okay, but uh, the issue is, you know, yeah, I mean, no, because he introduces this uh, uh, weight for each connection, right? So you have to have a way to determine what value to use for these weights, right? So, so, so that's like, uh, you know, I mean, Frank Rosenblatt also proposed a training process, okay, to train the perceptual, okay? So this training is based on, is based on HAPS rule, okay? HAPS rule. HAPS, uh, this HAB, okay, download HAB is a biological uh, 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 researcher, okay? He, of course, he researched on the, 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 the biological neuron, okay? And his funding, okay, in his research, he, he finds that, okay, when a biological neuron, okay, often triggers another neuron, then the connection between these two neurons grows stronger. Okay, remember we talked about like neurons, they, 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 ha they may have connections, right? So if, um, uh, if these two neurons get triggered simultaneously all the time, then their connection has um, re like feed I mean positive feedback to, to increase the connection uh, um, strength. So, so the idea was, I mean, summarized in a catchy phrase, okay, something like this, okay. Cells that fire together, wire together. Very, very simple catchphrase, okay. So this rule, okay, okay, is known to be HAPS rule, or we call this as Habian learning, Habian learning. So this idea, this idea is used to train our perception, okay? So, um, so what exactly do we use to train the perception? Like, a, like a, I mean, even if we say, okay, we use a, this HAPS rule, but uh, what do we mean by make the connection stronger? Actually, we, uh, we do it in a, somehow like a, in a neg, in in a, in an opposite manner. Okay, so connection weight between two neurons is increased when they have the same output. Okay, so the perception are trained using a variant of this rule. Okay, so it doesn't use the, this HAPS rule directly. Okay, so instead, okay, it takes into account the error made by the net network. Okay. So if the output is the, is the same as the expected value, okay, then nothing happens, okay? But uh, if the output is wrong, then we have an error, right? So this error, okay, will reinforce the connection that lead to, you know, it will, it will uh, when I say reinforce the connection that will lead to the wrong output, I mean like uh, it's going to correct the wrong output. Okay, so it's not, it actually doesn't, um, doesn't uh, uh, um, enhance the correct input, but it actually, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, correct the wrong output. Okay, so, so not, uh, enhance the, 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 the connection for the correct output, but uh, you know, for the correct output, it doesn't do anything. But for the wrong output, it's going to do correction. So let me, let me, let me put it this way, okay? So it's going to be something like this. This is the weight. Okay, weight. This WIJ is the weight. Okay, so, so this is, XI is your current uh, feature is your current feature, okay? And uh, this current feature, okay, if this y i hat, y j hat is the current output. This y j represent the ground truth, 
okay if your output is the same as yj what happens these two terms cancel each other right right remember okay um, in perceptron we are talking about binary output right because the output is either zero or uh, or one okay assuming we use heavy side okay assuming we use heavy side okay then okay so if y this y yj hat and the yj i mean this prediction you get from the current 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 model is the same as the ground truth these two terms cancel each other so nothing happens right so the previous weight is going to be the next weight right okay but if the output okay is different from the ground truth okay then this value multiplied by this uh, feature and this eta this eta is learning rate okay eta is the learning rate okay so this will be used to modify this weight okay to correct it to correct it toward the more correct uh, direction okay so basically okay as I said this is kind of like the opposite of her Hap's rule okay because Hap's rule tells us that if two things fire together connect their connection to grow stronger but here we you know we, we don't do this like in a positive manner if they are if 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 they are if they match we don't enforce we don't enhance the connection but uh, if they are the, the, the output is the same as the the predict uh, as the ground truth then you no know, nothing happens but if the output is different we try to correct it so it's a uh, it's kind of like a uh, the, the 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 other side of the haps rule okay so this perceptron learning rule okay or weight update okay it can be proof okay it can prove um, so the decision boundary of each output neuron is linear so the perception are, are also uh, I mean linear okay so you know is this perception is in they are incapable of learning complex patterns as I will show you in a I mean, with an example later okay however if the training instances are linear linearly acceptable okay then uh, Rosenblatt okay prove okay prove that this algorithm would converge to a solution okay so what do we mean by linearly acceptable it means that okay uh, we say two set of points are in a multi-dimensional space are linearly acceptable if they can be completely separated by a hyperplane okay if you have many many points and uh, say say two dimensional if you have many points and you can draw a line to break these two set of points into two different sp uh, half half space then we call this uh, as you know linearly acceptable okay so obviously like uh, the I mean when your uh, perceptron okay training is done that that uh, uh, linear equation represented by this perceptron is going to be the similar to that line that separate those those points okay and then the proof I mean I mean here it's like uh, let's show you like uh, what happens okay so um, when the output is you know if y is plus one uh, uh, you know here we are assuming I mean the output is we are using like uh, is um, what should I say like uh, um, the sine okay sine function so we have a positive one and negative one but uh, if you use uh, you know um, um, if you use like a bi bi uh, binary okay like a heavy side okay then it's going to be one and zero okay but anyway if it's positive one okay and uh, you know um, and uh, the result uh, ground truth is zero then 
what happened is that I mean the new weight is going to be you know one plus x. Of course, we assume here we assume eta. The learning rate is one. Okay. So what happens if this is w? This is x. This is the new w plus y x. Okay. This is the new weight. New weight. But if y is negative one, okay, what happens is that if w is this one, x is this one, I mean, this is what you have, okay? I mean, visualize the, okay, this is the, I mean, uh, the perceptual learning, or perceptual training, okay? And uh, this is the algorithm, okay, for perceptual training. And uh, 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 here is, uh, you know, another version to to, to tell you, I mean, to, to say like uh, what the perceptual learning algorithm is, or, okay, uh, we, it is abbreviated as a PLA. Of course, the PLA may represent different meaning, okay? Here, we just uh, mean it's a perceptual uh, learning algorithm, not uh, uh, um, the other way, okay? Well, if you know what I mean, okay? Anyway, so, the PLA can be proved, okay? Um, assume there exists some parameter vector, theta star, okay, such that theta star, uh, the norm of that is one, and uh, some gamma greater than zero, such that, okay, we have this. In other words, okay, uh, they are, uh, linearly acceptable, okay, because this is, the, this theta, theta star is like uh, the weight. So weight, you now inner product x, xt is like, uh, this is the, represent the, 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 the linear function, okay. Assuming addition that for all t equal to 1 and this one is, uh, you know, small equal to r, then the perceptual algorithm makes at most this many errors, okay. We can prove that. I mean, this many errors just means like uh, with this many uh, iterations, we are guaranteed that the perception will converge to a correct classifier that separate this uh, um, this uh, this uh, this uh, instances. So, so this uh, we have like uh, I mean, due to the time constraint, we don't have the time to talk about the proof. Okay, they are you no. Know, uh, uh, the formal proof, okay, is can be found here, okay. Um, you guys are more than welcome to check it out, okay. So, so PsycheLearn provide perceptual class, okay, which can, you know, implement a single LTU network, okay, so it can be used just like uh, you expect, okay? So uh, you can use it for the iris data set, okay? So here, okay, you can see um, we, t we, we, uh, we load the iris data set, okay, here. And here, I mean, we have like, uh, um, this two, three just means that we want the only the second and the third, um, uh, uh, features from this data set, okay, which represent pedal length and pedal width, okay, and the iris target is uh, basically it's like uh, um, um, you know just uh, show you like uh, what type of iris it is, okay, um, uh, which is like uh, there's a um, iris called Setosa, okay, this is one type of iris, okay, so we want to use this uh, uh, um, uh, model to, to, to tell, okay, if uh, iris belongs to this uh, type or not, okay, and eventually, okay, we can, you know, start from a random state and we fit the training data set and we are able to do the prediction pretty much, I mean, for a given set of like uh, like uh, features okay the width and the and uh, uh, length and the width of the pattern okay so we are able to tell if this is uh, 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 satos, sat, uh, satosa or not okay so this is like a 
an example of I mean to use the um, the perceptual okay so there's another way to you know to um, you can also use SGD classifier okay uh, to simulate the uh, uh, psych uh, uh, perceptron class okay so um, so here okay it's equivalent to use a SGD class with the following hyperparameters so loss equal to perceptron uh, learning rate okay equal to constant and the eta zero equal to one this is the learning rate okay you could use like a different value if you want and uh, penalty equal to none okay no regularization of course if you want to include regularization I mean you could do that but the perceptron uh, for perceptual model, it doesn't have so many uh, parameters. So, so really, the, uh, the I don't think you need uh, to use regularization. Okay, so uh, and this comments uh, to compare with the logi logistic regression classifier. If you have no knowledge about logistic regression classifier, don't worry about it. Okay, um, so. Remember, I say the perception was uh, um, um, proposed in 1957. Okay, and in the late 1960, 1969. Okay, Marvin Minsky, this guy is a researcher from MIT. Or okay, Seymour paper. I'm not that familiar with him, but Marvin Minsky is a very famous guy. He later on, if I remember correctly, he later on went to Stanford, okay? Uh, I forgot Stanford or Carnegie Mellon, but uh, this guy is a famous, I mean, he, he actually got the Turing Award, okay, uh, uh, for his contribution to artificial, new, uh, artificial intelligence, okay? So they highlighted in their paper, perceptrons, okay, uh, a number of weakness of perceptrons, okay? In particular, okay, the fact that they are incapable of solving trivial problems. For example, they uh, they give an exclusive or classification problem. So this is a very very simple one. Okay, uh, let me show you. Okay, we have four instances. Okay, uh, so four instances that belong to two classes. So this is a binary classification. Okay, so binary classification it's binary classification so that's why I mean it can be used supposedly we can use perception to to handle it okay but uh, unfortunately you can see that we have two um, uh, triangles and the two solid squares and uh, uh, obviously you can see that the arrangement of these four instances okay you have no way to to separate them by one linear function, right? Okay, because they are somewhat like uh, 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 tangled together, right? Tangled to each other. Okay, so so this is this is at a location zero zero, or you can say the first attribute is zero, the second uh, attribute is, is zero. This one is uh, one zero. This one is one one. This is this one is uh, zero one. Okay. And then, okay, because these four instances, as I say, they, 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 there's no linear model that can separate these four instances, okay? Uh, and the perceptron by default is a linear model, okay? So unfortunately, there's no way for perceptron, uh, for perceptron model, I mean, to, 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 to deal with this, okay? But, okay, but we can extend the perception a little bit, okay, and we are able to solve it, okay, something like this. Originally, we perception, okay, when we say perception, we always refer to one layer of LTU, right? Only one layer, okay? But uh, if you try to I mean, and that one layer cannot solve this. But if we try to use two layers, 
in this example, we have two layers. Then you will find out that we are able to solve it. Okay, uh, let's 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 uh, 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 take a no. Let's try it. Okay, for example, zero zero. If x one is zero, why x two is zero? What happens? Okay, uh, the weight. Okay, this is plus one. This is plus one. Okay, so we have. Uh, uh, let let's look at this. So we have zero for x one x two, and we have uh, minus negative uh, minus one point five. So after a step function is negative one, right? Negative one. So negative one uh, uh, with the weight negative one, it's it's going to be one. Okay, one. Okay, here. And uh, how about this? This one is uh, we have get zero from x one x two, but we have negative zero point five from the bias. So we have negative zero point five. So the result is negative one. Negative one with the weight plus one is negative one. So we have this is positive one, right? We got negative one here, multiply weight negative one. So it's one, one and the multi negative one. So they cancel each other. So we have negative 0 0.5 from the, the second bias. So the result is negative one, right? Okay, so negative one represent this uh, square, solid square class. Okay, and you can try one one. You are going to end up with negative one two. Okay, let's try. So this is uh, uh, well, one, one. Okay, so it's going to be two, and uh, negative one point five. So we what we got is uh, uh, zero point five, right? So we have positive one. So we have one, one, and the negative zero point five. So again, it's a positive one. So positive one, negative one, uh, multiplied by the, by the negative one. That is, we have negative one. One multiplied by mu positive one. We have positive one. So these two cancel each other again. So we have this. Uh, we got the, the, this uh, negative zero point five. So the result is negative one two, right? So how about the, this? The other two. Let's try one of them, okay? Let's just try one of them, okay? This one, one zero, one zero. This is one, this is zero, okay? One, so it's a one, uh, and the negative 1.5. So uh, we have a negative 0 0.5, so it's a negative one, okay? And this, this two, uh, we have one and negative 0 0.5. So we have two minus uh, 0 0.5, so it's a 1.5. So we have one here. Okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. What do we have? This is like a, we have two. We have a 0 0.5, so it's a one. So two. Yeah, this is also one. Hmm? Did I make a mistake? Oh, sorry, this is zero. What did I say? Okay, one zero. So this is like a negative one. And uh, one zero, so it's a uh, one. So it's a 0 0.5, so it's a one. So this is negative one, this is one. So multiply by the way. So we get uh, this is one, this is one. So we got two. Two negative five, 0 0.5, so it's going to be 1.5. So the result is one. Okay, so this result is one. Okay. So this one you can try it. The result is also one, okay. So the two classes, okay, they are, you know, each one the the the, the solid square is uh, negative one. The the shallow uh, 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 triangle, the class is, uh, um, you know, is one, and uh, you know, the two layers of. Um, Perceptron, okay. Well, if you call it perceptron, okay, uh, uh, can easily solve this problem. Uh, I, I want to emphasize: this is not, this is not the only uh, weight arrangement to solve this problem. Okay, there are many, many weight arrangements that you can you can use uh, two layers of perceptron, two uh, two layers of LTU, okay, LTU units 
to solve the, the exclusive or classification problem. OK? But the issue is, the issue is, OK, for this, because this is no longer a perceptron. For the perceptron, you are dealing with only a one layer of LTU, right? And uh, you can use HAPS rule to train the model to get the weight, the desirable weight. But uh, um, if you have multiple layers of LTU, there's no adequate way to train the model. Okay, even though we, we, we can specify the numbers to say, oh, this can solve this classification, but uh, we don't have a systematic way to train, the, to train the model to get those numbers. Okay, at least at a time, okay, when, um, when Marvin Minsky, you know, wrote that paper, people don't know how to train this. They only know, okay, this one can do the classification, but uh, there's no uh, a good way to train the model at that time, okay? So, okay, this resulting ANN, okay, with multiple, um, you know, uh, uh, LTU layers, are, well, it's called multi-layer perceptual, or MLP. Okay, uh, this is, you know, uh, remember, I, if, you, if you already check out the first, um, first uh, 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 project, you will, you will see that I especially ask you guys to use MLP to solve that problem. But of course, I mean, uh, we haven't really, no, we just show you, okay, my, uh, uh, if you have more than one layer of LTU, it is called MLP, but uh, in reality, MLP is still slightly different from this, okay? Uh, because we don't no longer use uh, LTU unit that often uh, in, anymore, because that, that one is a little bit too, too naive, okay? But anyway, you can see that, okay, yeah, I mean, we can, we can solve a slightly more complicated problem by using multiple layer perceptual, okay? So, now we are in a position to formally introduce what the multi-layer perceptron is, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, this is perhaps the first one we can call it deep neural networks, okay? Um, uh, some people say, okay, if your neural network has more than one uh, hidden layer, then we call it deep neural network. But uh, really, like uh, nowadays, the, 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 you know, the distinction between deep learning and the neural network is really much, really not, really not that much. Okay, you can treat, pretty much use deep learning on any neural network. It doesn't necessarily need to be multi-layers, multi okay? I mean, so, so don't worry about, uh, I mean, I mean, when I say like, uh, you know, deep neural, you know, if two or more lay hidden layers, it's called a deep neural network, okay? But, uh, uh, you know, we just say the, all this are be belongs to deep learning, okay? So you can see in, uh, in this, uh, you know, um, no, the, 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 the multi-layer perceptron, we have input layer, we have one output layer. In between them, we have hidden layers. We could have more than one layer in between, okay? And uh, for each layer, except the output layer, we have bias, we have bias. And the, the in between layers, the connection is fully connected it's fully connected. Okay, this is like a, you know, uh, when we say MLP, this is like a, uh, the MLP that we are referring to, but, but here, okay, as for, for each neuron, what exactly do we use for each neuron? I mean, we, we actually no longer use uh, 
MLT that much. Okay, but we are going to talk about that. I mean, uh, in a minute. Okay, so we also call this net this type of network as a feed forward neural network. Okay, what what do we mean by feed forward? Okay, basically the input we get input from the from here, and the input gets passed. I mean, you no, know, to go up and up, a layer by a layer, until we get output. So the the the, the direction of the data flow is one you know is one 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 direction from the bottom to the top okay and we call that feed forward neural network okay so when the, there are other architecture okay that may not be feed forward okay for example in the future when we talk about a recurrent neural network it's not feed forward okay but uh, yeah, a, a lot of ANN are feed forward, not just multi-layer perceptual. Okay, for example, CNN is most of the CNN are feed forward too. Okay, so when an ANN contains a deep stack of hidden layers, we call it deep neural network. Okay, the field of deep learning studies DNN and more generally models containing deep stack of computation. Okay, but uh, as I say. When we say deep learning, okay, nowadays, okay, uh, it's basically just a research on neural networks, okay. I mean, uh, to be honest, like uh, it, nobody use like uh, one layer to do anything, anyway, nowadays, okay, because one layer is just too simple to deal with any meaningful task, okay. So even so, many people talk about deep learning whenever neural networks are involved, as I said, even the shallow ones, okay? So, well, um, yeah, I don't think we have time to, to finish this. So let's uh, stop here, okay? We will talk about how we can train the MLP next time, okay? The training of MLP actually is different from uh, Rosenblatt's, like, uh, like uh, uh, I mean, the HEPS learning, it's a much more complicated process. Okay, so we are going to refer, I mean, talk about this next time. Okay, any question? Okay, when I, talk about, when, when I say I will talk about this next time, I'm, I mean in next, next online class. Okay, next week we, ha we don't have class, and the week after next, the class will be held online. Okay, just want to remind you guys again. Okay? So, any question? If no additional question, thank you for coming, okay?